Hi guys, and welcome back to 101 with Frank Pinson. We have the main man right here, the well-known artist, Mr. Jody Harris. What's up, sir? Not much, not much. I Glad appreciate you here. coming here, man. Taking time out to come and um, spend with us. So uh, let's jump right into this thing. So is it safe to say that you have been involved with the arts the majority of your life? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty so, much. so how'd you get started with that? Um, my grandmother, Miss Anna Lee Burris, and my uncle, Mr. Jonathan Burris, um, were artists and creative types. So growing up, um, yeah, the art bug bit me. So I watched them create. My granny did poetry, wrote, she painted. And then my uncle was the biggest influence, you know, watching him do cartoons and cars. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just took it from there. So would you try to like recreate what he drew or would you get like the Sunday paper and get the comics and try to draw it? What was your first drawing? Do you remember that? In the, be in the beginning, it was cartoons because that's what we was watching back then, age 10, age 11. That was the big thing. So cartoons, I started you know, trying to draw cartoons and then went from there. Okay, so um, me being a little um, a, a little Facebook guy myself, I went on your Facebook guy, you say about 10 or 11 years old. Was this here about the time when you started doing your drawings here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see that picture right here, guys? You yeah. see Mr. Jody Harris up there <laughs> circle. And so, um, about that age, oh, you have a stud class, uh, a class right here. Who you got yeah, in there? Yeah, I got Mr. Tony Prino. Tony Prino, yeah. I got Miss Natasha Starks, in who we blue. share the same birthday, in January the blue, 14th. Yeah, I see in the middle. <laughs> um, I have Mr. Nick Avery, uh -huh. uh, Mr. Joy Smith, Krista McMichael. Oh man, that's uh, a good class, right? Yeah, there. it is a good class. That's Mr. a good class. So that's about the age you started your uh, first drawings and mm -hmm. whatnot, correct? Okay, so that's good stuff. So how did you actually like transition from drawing into spoken word? I know you spoke about your grandma doing that as well, but how did you go from drawing to um, speaking? Um, I got into that. Um, I got a chance. I was introduced to the Harlem Renaissance through. Mm -hmm. uh, through my grandmother who would give me books and you know different stuff and I got to see and hear you know like Langston Hughes and County Cullen and their words just captivated me by the way that they painted a picture with their words so I was like well hey I'm painting creating pictures you know let me try this with words too because it spoke to me so mm -hmm. that's how I got into it um, and it just blossomed from there. Oh, man. Um, so that's good stuff right there. So um, let's take it back a little bit. Um, I know um, when you were molding your artistic ways in high school, um, what high school did you go to? I went to Dalton High. You went to Dalton High. Dalton were high. there any classes or any teachers there that um, like when you walk through the halls, you were like, oh, I'm ready to go to this class. You remember what classes? Um, it was art. It was art. <laughs> AP art. AP well, Ms. art. Henders. Ms. Henders. So Ms. Henders, um, I don't know if she's still teaching or not. Um, she just retired. She just, she just retired. retired. And she missed Kinsley now. Miss Kinsley. But back then she was Miss Henders. Okay, so shout out to Miss um, Kinsley, correct? Miss mm -hmm. yeah. Kinsley. Okay, so that's good stuff. So um, after high school, um, I know you went to um, college. Where mm -hmm. where did you go and what schools did you attend and what did you um, study in? Um, I first, I went to the Atlanta College of Art from 1994 to 98. Mm -hmm. um, I studied illustration. I got a BFA in illustration from Atlanta College of Art. And a quick note on that, I went to school there with some world famous people now. Uh, Mr. Fabian Williams is a well-known artist, Fahamu Peku, Eric Mack, mm -hmm. um, Honey Good. If you Google some of these names, you'll see that they are like world-renowned artists. So these were some of my classmates there. Um, after that, I went to Georgia State University and majored in studio art. and. Um, the master's program in sculpture oh, man. Uh, at Georgia State University. So. Man, so you are well sculpted, I guess I can say. Yes, <laughs> yes. Through that in there. Okay. Yes. So um, being in Atlanta all of those years, did that help um, perfect your craft or did it um, just give you the paperwork saying, yeah, I went to school for this? Actually, when in Dalton, I got a little bit of, of where I wanted to go mm -hmm. with with it, it was being shaped. And then when I got to Atlanta and I was exposed to people from all, all over, over the world, yeah. different art techniques and ideologies and everything, that's when it blossomed, you yeah. know, and um, meeting people from London, New York, 
China, Japan, you know, England, Germany, just all these, the Italy, you know, that's when it really blossomed and uh, really molded into where it is today. Where so is. going to Atlanta is what okay. it really did it. So, um, so talking about things that you do today, um, on this picture here, I know that you do a lot of different type of arts. Um, can you tell mm -hmm. the people what it is you have here on the screen? Um, what is that? Um, those are actually some chairs that I redid um, for Amanda Brown, who's the director at the Creative Arts okay, Guild. Yeah. And um, she had saw some chairs that I did for another young lady, Miss Kelly Smith from Kelly Smith Design Studio. And she fell in love with them and she wanted me to do um, her some chairs and she wanted me to remix them in my own style. So the, that's what I came up with, you uh -huh. know. And so those are in her office right now at the Creative Arts Guild. So it's a mixture of graffiti and pop art and surrealism, and it was a homage to John Michelle Basquiat and Keith Haring. Oh man, that's good stuff right there. So I'm um, talking about the um, Creative Arts Guild and um, different showrooms um, for the young artists who are coming up. Is it important to have your work displayed like at these different venues, at the North Georgia Fair, at all these different places? Is it important to do that? If if you uh, if if you're going to take it seriously and into this as a career, it is. Because it's, it's not only a career builder, it's a momentum builder. It's a confidence builder as an artist. Because in this world with the attack on the arts and it being taken out of schools, you know, it's being devalued. So to have that opportunity to show your work anywhere, whether it be a fair, creative arts guild, party, you know, event, yeah, it's, it's a momentum builder. It's a confidence builder. So yes, I encourage artists to display your work anywhere you can, mm -hmm. even if at, if it's at church, the church picnic. Yeah. <laughs> set up some easels. Okay, set up some easels, okay. <laughs> so um, getting back to your um, grand grandmother um, who kind of introduced you into spoken word or whatnot, mm -hmm. and I know you say that you were um, influenced by the Harlem Renaissance, yes. is that? Um, can you kind of give a person a quick little snippet of how a poem or how something from the Harlem Renaissance sounds? Because I know the, the young kids who are watching today don't know anything about the Harlem Renaissance. No, okay. So can you give them a, a quick little um, snippet of how that goes? Oh, okay. The sky never tells the earth to pay up. The sun and the moon never argue over simple things. The ocean tide sometimes follows its own rhythm. No storm lasts forever, neither do we. I sent a letter to the sun asking for warmth when I need it the most, and the moon sent me you. That is a little piece from Langston News. Oh man. One of my favorite poets. That was o that was over my head right there. That yeah. <laughs> was over my head. So how can people contact you about um doing some or buying your work or booking you or, or doing anything like that? How can they find you? Um you can reach me on Facebook, um, as Jody Harris, or my second page, because my first one is full at Samo Graffiti Brown. You can find me on Instagram at Jody Electronica. You can check out my website, the Graffiteria. Can it you spell that for him? Spell that for him? The graffiteria mm -hmm. is spelled just like cafeteria, except it's G R A F F I T E R I A. Graffiteria.com. Got it, got it. Any last words of motivation to these kids, these young artists who are coming up that look up to you? They're going to be just like you when you grow up. Any words about bumps in the roads or anything you have for them? Um, I would say follow your passion, follow your dreams, and don't let anyone deter you. If you want to be an artist, if you want to be a singer, a rapper, just follow your passion. Oh man, that's good stuff right there. Um, I think you had something right there. What is that you Oh brought? yes, I have, um, I'm a big jazz fan. Um, so I have a Miles Davis oh, man. piece uh, to give to you, to present to you. And this is Miles paying homage to music. That is what the record stands for. Oh, uh, That's the 45 good and Miles Davis is like one of the greatest. So I, man, never, I is... never get anything here on the show, man. <laughs> you're going you to make me cry. You're going to make me cry here. <laughs> but thank you, sir, for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. You keep up the great work, too, inspiring us. I appreciate it. And don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with our next guest.